Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? I want to talk about tradition a little bit this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time we have together and for the blessings of life you've given us in Christ Jesus. Help us now, I pray, by your spirit, by your word today as we look into it and study together. Amen. When you look at this passage and you think about the passage here, what's being said here, notice uh, verse number one, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem. When you read that passage and you see that, you think about that. Also, uh, think about this passage. In Matthew 26, uh, the young folk, uh, me and uh, the young people this morning talked about this a little bit. In, in Matthew 26, verse 57, listen to this. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. And you notice who's coming to Jesus over here in Matthew 15. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem. You see, these, these religious leaders, we're talking about religious leaders. We're talking about men supposedly leading the people for God. They come to Jesus, and here's what they say. Why do thy disciples, verse 2, transgress the tradition of the elders? You do realize today, and I hope you do, that there's churches and there's preachers leading people, and if you don't do it just like they say it ought to be done, then you're transgressing God. You're not doing right by God. You know, they always say, well, this is the way my grandma done it, my grandpa done it, and, my, and, and, and everybody's done it, and I'm going to do it that way too. That's what the Pharisees are doing here. You see, they hold the tradition of the elders. The elders added hundreds of traditions to the law of Moses. But they didn't have anything to do with what God's word had to say. And here they come to Jesus. You see, Jesus there with his disciples. And listen, it's a good thing to wash your hands before you eat. You don't know what, you don't, nowadays you can mess with money. You don't know who's had that money in their hand. So, you know, it's a good thing to wash your hands before you eat. But listen, that ain't going to hurt you with God if you don't wash your hands before you eat. But you see, Israel the leaders of Israel, they got this washing thing down. You see, Israel's got to be washed. You do know that. John the Baptist come along preaching, didn't he? About baptism, about washing. You remember that? I'm not even going to put that up there. I was going to, but you understand that. You know that. But here they put this tradition to it. It says in verse 1 and 2, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, and it's the leaders, it's the religious leaders that's coming. You know what a scribe is? If you scribe something, you write it. The scribes are the ones that writ, wrote down the Word of God. The scribes were those, the, the, the writers. Uh, and and you've, you had, when, when, God, when Moses went up to the mountain and God gave him the Ten Commandments, you know, he busted the first set. So originals ain't all that important. As you hear everybody talking about you got to have the originals. <laughs> well, the originals, Moses broke all to pieces. What Moses come down the second time with was a copy. And that's what you got this morning. You got a copy of God's Word. Moses brought that copy down, and he gave it to the Levites, and they put it where? In the Ark of the Covenant for safekeeping. Now, what the scribes done, the Levites done, they, they made copies of that law and they distributed it through the whole 12 tribes of Israel so they'd know what to do with the work. They made copies of it and gave it to the people so they'd know what to do and how to do what God wanted them to do. But then that copy that Moses made 
was put in the Ark of the Covenant. And that's where God's Word was kept. And the scribes were those that described it out. They wrote out the Word of God. And here's the ones that supposedly supposed to know God's Word. And the Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? And that's what you got going on here. It's their law that said you got to wash your hands before you eat bread. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? You see, what they've done, they've added to the word of God. Go back to Deuteronomy. They had this book, and, and there's other places in the Bible that say this. But for the sake of Matthew, they had this copy. For the sake of the scribes, they had this copy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. They added, added all kind of traditions to God's law. I guess they tried to help it out a little bit. Help God, help the people live better. You kind of see that going on in the world today if you open your eyes a little bit. You know the sad thing about it is? Most of these men doing that, they need to take a real strong, hard look at themselves in the mirror and go ahead and admit that they can't live God's law, they can't live it perfect, they never could, and they never will. You know what will help you if you go ahead and just admit that you're a sinner and you need God? But you see, some folks, they can't get to that point because they've got to be better than others. And they've got to lift themselves up on a pedestal where they're looked at. Listen, I'd rather struggle. I'd rather struggle to be right and try my best to be right. And even though I fail, get up and try again and keep going trying to be right than to be deceiving people. And they, they think, I'm, oh, I'm all that holy and all that. Listen, I done found out. You can think highly of a man all you want. But he's a human just like you. And without God, none of us are any good. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, we'd all fall by the wayside. That's why I put that on the back of your bulletin today about the grace. Did you read that? I hope you read that. If you didn't, don't read it now. Read it later. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, you know who he's talking to, under the statutes and under the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. You know what he said? He said, the word I've given you, live by it. Then he said something else. Look at verse 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, Neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. And that's what God said. And you see, Israel added tradition after tradition after tradition, and they added the tradition of washing your hands before you eat bread. Israel done that. God didn't do it. Man done it. You see, it's not what goes in that defiles. It's what comes out. And that's what he's headed for in that passage over there. But go, go to Mark. Book of Mark chapter number 7. It, it'll help you understand this passage in Matthew 15 better. It's a parallel passage. Mark chapter 7. And I'll refer back here probably several times. So you may want to just hold this place over here. Mark chapter 7. Verse number 1. Mark 7. 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. You see, it's the parallel passage. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. A lot of people like finding fault, don't they? For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, he not holding to the word of God. Uh, I'll just make sure you didn't let me get away with that. Let me reread that so the people watching by internet, if they don't have a Bible, can understand I read that wrong purposely. 
For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not holding the tradition of the elders. It's the tradition of elders is the hand washing deal going on. And the tradition here is adding to the Word of God. It's subtracting from the Word of God. That's what Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses uh, 1 and 2 tell you. He said, you live by the Word that I've given you. Don't take away from it. Don't add to it so you can do the will that I've sent you to do. I'm going to jump ahead of myself right here and just give you a little hint right here. In the dispensation of the grace of God, you need to live by what God's given you to live by. You don't need to be adding things to what God's given you to live by today. And you see, that's a problem with most people in the world today. They're adding things that God commanded Israel back here. They're adding them on us today. Therefore, they're adding to God's Word for you and I today. That's where they falter. And that's why today there's so much confusion in the world today. And it's done by design of the devil. Do you hear me? Because tonight's message is going to fall in line with this. And I hope that it will just open eyes. And some of you, most of you folks, I say, should know some of these things we're going to bring out before the end of the night. But hopefully there's people out there that's never heard it. And I hope it will open their eyes to the truth. Of what God's Word says. Look at verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me? How many people you think today are meeting in buildings and trying to worship God? And the day we're living in today, you know, everybody's got to have that praise ban. Let me tell you something. All your work in a building, all your giving in a building. Everything you do in the name of God in worship is nothing if it's not according to God's Word. Well, the problem is they don't rightly divide. And that's the whole situation. Look what he says in verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. You say, but it's written in the Bible. Yeah, but did God give it to you today to live by today? Or did man give it to you to live by today? Living by what God said for you to live by is what makes God happy and it, it, it brings about true worship. But when you go to living by what man tells you to live by outside of what God's given you for today, then it becomes a worship that's just null and void. You say, God don't get a little bit out of it? Well, look what they're doing here. He says in verse 7, How be it in vain do they worship me? Why? What's the cause? They, what, what makes it vain? What makes their worship empty? Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And I'll tell you something, it's a serious thing, folks. The Pharisees and the scribes took their law and made it equal with God's law. By doing this, they made their worship to God useless. It had no purpose to God whatsoever. And the same thing goes on today. You see, God knows a true heart. God knows a true heart down inside. He knows who you are. He knows what your intentions are. He knows everything there is to know about it. I'm going to tell you something. You say, but people are so serious. You think those Pharisees wasn't serious? You think the people that followed the Pharisees wasn't serious? What happened to their worship because they followed people that wasn't following God? It was vain. Some of them got right. Some of them got in the little flock and got out. But you see, not only... Man, i got so much running through my mind. Look at verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like 
things you do. You see, it comes to the point where people have to, they back here, they were washing their pots and their cups so they'd be right with God. Well, they wanted everything to be just right. They wanted their works of their hands and what they were performing and what they were doing before God to make everything right with them and God. It's not about what you do. It's not about your performance. It's about God. And about his son Christ, who done for you what you couldn't do for yourself. And when you enjoy the goodness of God, and just live in who you are in Christ, in the body of Christ, and you live by God's word, not trying to please God by all your works. Listen, you please God when you trusted his son. Live in that. If you ever come to the place you understand who you are in Christ and you live in that, that'll please God, but you keep working your fingers to the bone trying to get acceptance before God, telling God how bad and miserably you failed, and oh God, do forgive me this and help me do this, and Lord, help me walk. Oh God, forgive me, I'm so sorry. You know, and you go through all that stuff. Why don't you just realize you couldn't do it no way and just walk in Christ? If you get excited about who you are in Christ, and you get excited about everything he's done for you in Christ, you can walk in Christ every day and not worry about the struggles and all the things. And I understand that it's a struggle to live in this life. Don't think I don't. Watch, it. Watch verse 8 and 9 together. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. You ever talk to somebody about right division, about right to divide the word of truth, and they're going to reject what you're telling them about right division so they can keep their tradition and what they're doing? Folks, listen. It's a serious thing because you see, it's the devil's design for people to be fooled and be in religion. He don't care about people being in religion. They ain't hardly anybody you ever met in this world today that's not somehow religious. By design, they, go, they want to worship God, but, but not understanding, having no knowledge, no understanding of God's word, they worship other things and other gods. And that's the way they go. Look at verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect. You know what happens when you add your tradition? Verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. If you, it, listen, if you try to live in the dispensation of the grace of God, according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know what you've done to the word of God? You've made it of none effect. God's not healing people like they did back here in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He ain't casting out devils and all that stuff like, like he did back here in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I know there's faith healers out there, and I know people hear what I just said say it's ludicrous, but I know what God said. And if you live that way, you'll please God. They destroy the impact of God's word by adding and subtracting. They destroy the impact of God's word by adding their tradition. That's what they've done here in the Word of God. Go back to Matthew 15. Matthew chapter 15. Verse 4. Verse 3 and 4. He says, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What does he say? The commandment of God. For God commanded. See that? Verse 4, for God commanded, look at verse 5, but ye say. God commanded, but ye say. God said this, but you say this. That's what Jesus is confronting. Jesus is doing the talking. For God commanded, saying, honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. 
You have to understand what he's saying here. You see, God said, honor your father and mother, period. Your father and mother get old, you need to take care of them. Don't throw them off in some home somewhere to be taken care of by somebody else. I understand. Don't get me wrong. I understand in some situations, some situations when, when Alzheimer's and some of this stuff in the world today comes along, the stuff going on, I understand sometimes you have to have them where they can get some help. But you have to understand the commandment back here to the Jews. The Jews wasn't supposed. To, the Jews were supposed to take care of their mothers and fathers in their in their old age. And what what it is here, they could give a gift to the temple. They could give a gift to the church, and the church took care of that stuff. And they didn't. They was free. They was free from that. Corbin. If you go over there and read it in Mark, it's called Corbin. It's a gift. Mark chapter seven. It's the same. It's a parallel passage. Over in verse eleven. Uh, Mark seven eleven. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father and mother, it is Corban, which is a gift. That is to, to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. He don't have to honor. Verse 12. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. They come about with the law back here, and they say, well, if you give a gift to the church, if you give the money, then you don't have to worry about taking care of them. We'll, we'll free you from honoring your father and mother, and we'll do that for you. And, and Jesus looked right dead in their eyeballs and said, you have made void the word of God through the traditions that you've set up. Letting them pay a gift and being free of that, Listen, that made void the word of God. You see how he's using this thing and how it's going today? Matthew chapter 15 again. Look at verse 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines. They teach it to be doctrine. The commandments of men. And folks, listen, you've got people today teaching stuff for doctrine. Not only in the prophecy program, but friend, listen, it's a serious business today in the mystery program, just like it was right here with these Israelites, with these Jews back here in times past. It's the same thing, folks, today living in the dispensation of the grace of God in the mystery as it was for them back there. People are doing the same thing today. Look at 1 Peter 1. Hope you understand that all the giving, attending, singing, preaching, it's all in vain when man's traditions is added to it. When it gets outside of the pure word of God, the worship becomes vain before God. It's empty. It's useless. It's worth nothing. You say, I don't like that. Well, take that up with God. I'm just telling you what he's got wrote down here. You can't worship God by following man or human's tradition today. 1 Peter 1, verse 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, what empty conversation? Received by tradition. From your fathers. Verse 18. Yeah, 1 Peter 1.18. Look at it again. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold. You understand your money can't buy you salvation. Money can't buy what Christ done for you. And people back here were paying not to honor the father and mother. And they was free from the law. They didn't have to honor them. They was just free in the sight of man. They wasn't free in the sight of God. And you see, people today, they don't understand what they're doing when they're adding all of what they want to add to the dispensation of the grace of God. They're adding to the tradition that God give you today. You do understand we have tradition today. We do have tradition. We're going to look at it here in just a minute. But the tradition that you and I follow is not what man puts in there. It's what God gave Paul for you and I today. But here, Israel. He says here plainly to the nation of Israel, 
For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Israel was saved from sin, but they were also saved from something else, friend. They were saved from religious bondage. They were saved from a false system established by the leaders of Israel. He's telling them it's not the tradition that was laid out back here, the scribes and the Pharisees and all the elders follow. He said, you're not redeemed with that. He said, the washings and, and all that you do and the paying of the money, you're not redeemed by that. You're redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Now go back with me in your mind to Exodus chapter 12. Israel's coming out of Egypt. They're crossing over the Red Sea. They're leaving a... a, a a, a, a place of idol worship. They're leaving a place of false religion, of serving of other gods, and they're going out to serve the true God. And how did they get out of there? They shed the blood of the Lamb, and they ate it that night as the Passover sacrifice, and they left out. They got out by the blood of of the lambs back there. And that was a symbol. God knew Christ was coming. He knew the blood was going to be shed. And they got out. And that's what Peter's saying right there. Peter said, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. They got out of that tradition from, from Egypt and the religions of Egypt. They got out. And God met with them over there as they went out. God met with them. And they had good fellowship with God when they left out of Egypt. After they sacrifice the blood. And folks, that's what it's all about. It's not about the laws and the religions of the world. It's about God and about what He's done for you. You see, God saved them from the religious system of the leader's tradition. These folks were held under man's religion. It was man-made tradition that had them bound. And folks, that's what Peter's telling them. It's not with your father's tradition, no silver, no gold. And Paul said, be careful how you build upon the foundation of Christ. Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hair, stubble. You need to understand today, folks, ain't nothing you can do but trust him. And there ain't nothing you can do but trust his word. Read his word, try to understand his word to you, rightly divided. If you don't get it rightly divided, then you're still not following God's word. And you can wind up being in, spinning your wheels and doing things in religion that becomes vain before God because it's not what God's doing today. That's where tradition leads you. You've got to get back to the Bible, to the Word of God. God saved Israel from the evil religious system of Egypt, and He did it through Jesus Christ the Lord. And then He saved the people of Peter, James, and John's day from the tyranny and the religious traditions of the elders, and He done it through the preaching of the cross, of the Messiah, rejected Messiah crucified. And folks, for you and I today, it's Romans to Philemon, given to you by the Apostle Paul. God gave it to you for today. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 4. You remember reading this verse last week? Talking about in whom? Verse 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You want some wisdom and knowledge of God? You want some good tradition? Get it from God. Get it from His Word. Don't try to get it from some man putting bondage over you, telling you you need to walk an aisle, you need to do this, you need to do that. Oh, you need to sell all you got. You hear him saying that stuff? But that's vain preaching. That's vain living if you're going that way. You need to understand what he says here. He says in verse 4, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Who beguiled who? The serpent beguiled Eve there in the garden, didn't he? You see, this thing goes all the way back to Satan wanting to be like the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Satan wants to be possessor 
of heaven and earth. And so you don't, you, you don't ever, I hope that you always in your Bible study, when you're trying to understand the word of God and you're trying to read it and you're trying to get some understanding, you're trying to get some knowledge, don't ever lose sight of the fact that book tells you how to live. It tells you what God, God's done to reclaim the heavens and the earth to himself. And that book's all about living and doing the things of God. It tells you what he's done in the past. It tells you what he's doing now. And it tells you what he's going to do in the future. And all you've got to do is look. Listen, since I've got in right division, I understand this book way better than I ever did before I got into it. I understand something about God's word today. And it's not because I listen to some preacher beating me over the head, telling me I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You know, I've never seen anybody live right under preaching like that more than a week or two. And then you just get all discouraged because you can't do it. You do it for a while, you get pumped up, you get in a revival meeting, and you get revived for a couple of weeks. Before you know it, you done failed, and you're back on the bottom again. You can't figure it out. But if you just understand who you are in Christ, understand right division, you can live every day and just go on, knowing who you are in Christ, you knowing you're complete in Him, knowing you have it all in Christ, and then... You just live for him. Look what he says here. Uh, he, and, and that's what he says here. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your works. Okay, I just want to make sure you got that. Let me read it right for you folks on the internet and for you here too. He said, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. You need to understand that. You need to get steadfast in Christ. You need to get totally satisfied with your completeness in Him. You ain't never going to be satisfied with how good you're living and how good you're working and how good you're walking because you're going to fall somewhere down the line and then you're going to get all down and out. But if you'll just get caught, man, if you'll just get built up in the steadfastness in Christ, you can walk every day knowing it's Him and not you anyway. That's what he says, verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. How did you receive Him? By your works? Just talked to an 84-year-old man yesterday, 84 years old. And he told me he'd had cancer. And I said, well, do you know where you're going when you die? Well, well, I'm going upstairs. I said, you're going upstairs? I said, you live in a two-story house? <laughs> I was being funny, you know. But I told him, I said, listen, it's so simple to be saved. And I pulled out one of those tracks I wrote. And I began to show him how simple it was to be saved. He said, now just where's your church at? He said, you got a church here in Concord? I said, yeah. He said, just where's it at? And he told me if nothing happened, he was, him and his wife were going to be here this coming Wednesday night. I hope so. But it looked to me like that 84 year old man got a little bit of joy in his heart before I walked away from him because he seen the simplicity because he was, he was talking about living right. It's the way you live. Folks, you can't live good enough to get to heaven. You can't do it. You never will do it. That's what he says in verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, you received him by faith, not by walking right, working. You received him by faith. So walk in him. Walk in him by faith. Rooted and built up in him. Not built up in your works. Not built up in how your performance is. But built up in him. And established in the faith. As you have being taught, abounding there with thanksgiving. How did those folks get taught in the body of Christ in the mystery? They heard Paul. Watch what he says in verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. I used to call that philosophy. But you know what? That's about as good a word. That's about, well, that's about the way it needs to be pronounced, isn't it? Philosophy. And what? Vain deceit. That's it. And what did he say their worship was in the, in, back there in Matthew? 
It was vain because it made void the word of God. He says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after who? I'm telling you. When preachers get up and go to beating and beating and beating and tell you you got to live this, you got to do that, you you backsliders, you work, you doing this, you need to be living this. You need to be living after Christ. You need to be built up in Him. You need to be rooted and built up in Him. Not by what you can do, not by your performance, because it's not about your performance anyway. It's about what He done for you. Beware, lest any man spoil you, verse 8. You need to look at that verse and look at it good. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Watch it. After the tradition of men. Now listen to me. When men take away from the Word of God... When men put upon you the things outside of the word of God, then it's man's doctrine and not God's. But now man can do the same thing by giving you something he didn't give to you, written in God's word. And when he goes to telling you, you need to be at the Sabbath day, you need to keep uh, the covenants of God, you need to keep the feasts of Israel, if they go to telling you, all those things are in the word of God, aren't they? Didn't God command Israel to do that? Didn't he say uh, circumcision was something in the foreskin of the male is an everlasting covenant? Man goes telling you to do that, guess what he's done? He has taken you outside of God and put you on, under their tradition, telling you that's the way they do it and that's the way you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to do things in that manner. You're supposed to do things in the tradition God gives you. God does give you tradition. And Paul says it right there. What he don't say is just as important as what he does say. You see that? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Don't follow tradition of men. Follow tradition of God. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. It's not about your works. It's about Christ. Built up in Him. Established in Him. Rooted in Him. Look at Second Thessalonians 3. Let's get the tradition God wants you to walk by. The tradition we are to follow today, friend, is found right here in Second Thessalonians, verse number 6. Now we command you, brethren. Who's He talking to? Save people in the dispensation of grace right where He's living. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. Paul had more trouble with, with these Jews coming along and trying to put the, the body of Christ back under the law, back under the traditions of, of time past. Paul said, don't you let them come along. You get under the tradition that I've given you. Because what he got come from where? God. Now we command you, brother, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you would draw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. What's verse 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle. That's strong language, friend. Paul just told them in verse 6 to walk after the tradition that they received of him. The traditions that he preached. The truths that he proclaimed. Right? Verse 14. If any man obey not our word by this epistle. Note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. You, try, you need to try to help folks that don't understand right division. That try to get you to do stuff back here that's given to Israel. 
You don't need to try to just brush them off. You need to admonish them. You need to try to help them, put them in mind, uh, to caution them, to reprove them gently, to understand rightly dividing the word of truth is the way you go. And if you can't do anything with them, you just admonish them as a brother. And if you can't do anything with them, then you just cut the company off with them. It's not that you put them down and you'd say they're worse than dogs and, and you just scrub them down real bad. You try to show them right division. You try to show them truth. Brother Gary and I was at the hospital one night talking to a preacher. And he got huffy. And, oh, yeah. Brother Gary said a few things to him. Before. Man, he just, he got plumb huffy. And Brother Gary, tell you, I followed that preacher all the way to his car. Trying to talk to him. I told him, I said, I, you know, I ain't trying to start no fuss with you. I ain't trying to argue with you. We just want to talk to you about, didn't I, brother? I followed him all the way to his car. I was trying to admonish him. I was trying to help him. I was doing it gently. I wasn't being rough and eager, you know. And that's the way we're supposed to do. But you don't live in things that's not given to you. We're to follow Paul's epistle today. Listen, if you take Romans 12, Ephesians 4, Colossians 3, 1 Thessalonians 5, and you'll start working on those things, and start looking and living like God tells you to live by the pen of the Apostle Paul, by God's Holy Spirit. We've been through those passages time and time again. If you can get those passages down, and listen, it's going to take you till you leave this earth to get it. And you probably still won't understand and, try and get it all down on the way you're supposed to do things. But you ain't got to worry about going back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You ain't got to worry about going to Isaiah. You ain't got to worry about getting instructions back there. You just get the instructions from Romans 12, Ephesians 4, Colossians 3, and 1 Thessalonians 5. If you get the instruction from those four books, get them all wrote out. And that's going to take you a while to do that. You ain't going to do it overnight. And you just begin to try to live by the instruction you got in there. You don't need nothing else. You'll have your hands full. Living for God, living under the, the tradition Paul gives you by God the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ personally giving it to him. And Paul putting it down by the Spirit of God. And you have it today right there in written form. If you can get that, you get it. Go back to Matthew 15. I'm going to have to stop here in a minute. I didn't get as far as I wanted to get. I wanted to get a little further. Let's just read down through here a little bit so you see some of this stuff. Matthew 15, verse 4. Matthew 15, 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, this is what the elders say with their tradition, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus... Have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition? You see that? Now, I tell you that their tradition made the word of God of none effect. It made it null and void. And the elders of the temple uh, would let these folks pay. Again, I told you that earlier about for their, for their uh, families. Look what, now, what would you say tonight, I mean today, if I'd look out there at you and I'd say, You hypocrite! You hypocrite! You hypocrite! What would you do if I'd done that to you? Would you be mad at me? Would you be ready to rip my head off? Look what Jesus does to that bunch. Verse 7. Ye hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying. Now listen, you think Jesus was real life? You hypocrites! No, no. He laid right at them. Could you imagine the Son of Man doing that? You hypocrites. He said in verse 8, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. Folks, listen. I don't care how eloquent you can speak. I don't care how eloquent you can pray. You can draw as nigh to God as you want to with your lips. But where's your heart? This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Religious, but don't truly honor God. 
but in vain they do worship me. It's all in vain. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. You see, they, they, these Pharisees, you remember verse 1? The scribes and Pharisees, they came to Jesus and they say these things. Notice when Jesus gets to verse 10, notice what he says. And he called the multitude. He calls everybody there. He says, hey, 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 listen to me. He got everybody's attention for what he's about to say. When he said, you hypocrites, he said it to the ones adding the tradition. And now he's wanting everybody to listen to what he has to say. He said, and he called the multitude and said unto them, hear and understand. Hear what I'm about to tell you. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. This defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Don't you know, man, you made them mad. You ruffled some feathers. Don't you know you made them mad? Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Parable? He ain't speaking in no parable. Jesus looked at Peter and he said, And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Peter, ain't you got it yet, son? I told you about parables and how they interpret them. I ain't talking about no parable. Do ye not understand, do, do not ye understand, verse 17, that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draw? Um, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are they, or these are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. I just read down through that so you get that. Jesus is dealing with a bunch of people that don't understand truth. They don't understand it. And he's trying to get them to see truth. You see, Jesus answered them. Because the tradition was, if you come to the temple and you give a gift, a corbin, then you, you, can, you, know, you don't have to be in bondage. You can be free from your duties, from the Word of God. But I don't care. I'm going to stop right there and we'll pick up there tonight. Uh, I don't care how much money you give. I don't care what the church says you can give and you can be free. Or you can buy your way out of purgatory. Or you can do all kind of things. I don't care what they say. If it don't match the word of God, they are in the tradition of men, and they have broken the word of God, and they've broken the tradition of God. And the law of God in their worship is just vain, empty, and it's headed nowhere. And the author of it is Satan. And we'll finish that up tonight. And point all that out. And hopefully it will be a help to you. And hopefully it will be a help to you folks by way of internet. I hope that you have enjoyed studying the word of God with us today. And if you are not saved today. And if you are in here not saved. The way you get saved by God's grace. Is from your heart truly. Believing that Christ died for your sins on that cross. And believing the blood he shed. God accepted as payment for your sin debt. Do you trust Christ that he died for your sins, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day, and because he lives and because of his resurrection, you can have all your sins forgiven, you can be, have the resurrection with Christ, and you can live eternally with him one day in heaven. Trust him. If you're here, trust him. Don't leave this earth. With, it's, all you've got to do is trust him. It ain't about your works. It's not about your flesh. Be rooted in him. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your goodness. 
and all that you've given us in Christ Jesus, Lord. I love you the best I know how, Lord. And I pray you'll help me to do more in the way of showing others the love that you've given to me. And Lord, help us all in this place that we'd be able to share the love you've given us and the life you've given us in your son, Jesus Christ, with others. Amen.